Okay, we're finally up to the good stuff. Parameterize a curve in 3D. But wait, you say. You told us that a curve in 3D can only be defined parametrically. If it can only be defined parametrically, why would we need to parameterize? Ah, it can be described non-parametrically. Parameterize the curve that is the intersection of the two surfaces. So you will be given two surfaces, their intersection is a curve, and we need to find the parametrization of that curve. Now, remember we're in 3D, we're in a curve. A curve needs one parameter, and in 3D it needs three components. Okay, what's the plan? The plan is best case scenario. You're given two explicitly defined surfaces, z equals f of xy and z equals g of xy. Notice we have three variables, but we can set f of xy equal to g of xy and for the time being eliminate z. We're going to set f of xy equal to g of xy and hopefully the best case scenario is that we can get an explicit function in y. So this is an if possible here. Sometimes you can't get that. Then we're basically done with the parameterization. We set x equal to t. We substitute t for x here. So we get y as a function of t. Then we pick the easiest of the two surfaces and substitute these two into it. But as always, the hard part is find the interval of t. So let's see an example. Example. So we're two parameterize the intersection of z equals x squared minus y and z equal 2x for y less than or equal to 8. Two explicit functions, z equals this, z equals this, set them equal to each other. So x squared minus y equals 2x. Oh, this is a good one. We can solve it for y. So how much is y? y equals x squared minus 2x. That's what we wanted to see. That's our best case scenario is when we can do that. So our parametrization is S of t equals, remember we need three components, so let's get down here. First one is x equal to t. The second one is y equal to h of t. So we take y down here, and where we have x, we now will put t. So t squared minus 2t. And the last one is substitute into easiest, which is our easiest. We have x squared minus y and 2x. This is easiest. So z equals 2 times x, which is t. So there's our parametrization down to the interval. What haven't we used? We have not used this piece right here. Okay, so how do we use that? We say y has to be less than or equal to 8. So from here we get t squared minus 2t must be less than or equal to 8. This is just a quadratic inequality, which you did back in high school. t squared minus 2t minus 8 must be less than or equal to 0. Factor it however you know how to do it. t minus 4, t plus 2 must be less than or equal to 0. You can use the quadratic formula to find these roots. You can graph it. But the point is that parabola going upwards so that it's negative between its two roots. The roots are 4 and minus 2, so it's negative between minus 2 and 4. So that gives us the interval. Certainly check to make sure that on one point that this works. So let's say 0. y would be 0 squared minus 0. 0 definitely less than or equal to 8. So the parameterization of the curve that is the intersection of these two surfaces is right here. Let's see this. Okay, so here we are in our Sage Notebook, which is our free and open source software for 3D. We're exploring param parametric curves. Because we have two surfaces defined with x, y, z, we need to declare variables x, y, z. And here are our two surfaces defined. z1 is equal to x squared minus y. z2 equals 2 times x. Here's our standard plot stuff. Those are our standard ranges. We're going to change them. Here's our standard axes, red, blue, and green. And here 
we have put in our two surfaces Z1 and Z2 on our regular plot 3D. I have also added the cutoff plot which is an implicit plot in 3D of the plane Y equal equal 8 so that we can see where it's cut off. The first surface is yellow, the second surface is purple, so we're looking for the intersection of yellow and purple cut off by teal. So let's change our ranges. I think we had from x equal to t from minus 2, so that's good, minus 2 to 4, so make this 5. Uh, we know that we need at least a y max of 9 since y goes to 8. This will have to check the y minimum. And z is equal to 2x, so let's double x, so minus 6 and plus 10 here. Now we're looking at our ranges. We have an 8 range here on the x, 12 on the y, and 16 on the z, so I think 3, 2, 1 will do. 3, 2, 1 will do. So let's evaluate this and see what we get. So here we are. Let's try and rotate it a little bit, see what we can get for purple with yellow. There we go. Purple with yellow is this right here, this curve. And this line here, I think, yep, is where the teal plane is coming through. That's the cutoff. So our curve is this piece of parabola here. And the x-axis was red. And so we have x equal to minus 2 here and x equal to 4 here. And this is the place where y is less than 8. So when we graph our parametric function that we developed, we want to see this piece of parabola here. That's our goal. Here we declare our variable t. We're defining our 3D curve s parametrically in our interval for t. Uh, we had x equal to t, y equal to t squared minus 2t, and z equal to 2t. Don't forget your double parentheses. And we had t1 from minus 2 to 4. And we're going to plot our curve. c equals parametric plot, s, t, t1, t2. And we're going to make it giant thick so we can see it. So here's all of our surfaces and curves all together. Let's evaluate. Okay, here's our curve. Let's see if we get it. There it is. The giant blue line is our parametric curve, and it is exactly our parabola cut off. Perfect. So we have parameterized our first curve in 3D. On to curve 2.